Aloha, my friends. Yeah, that means you. You're my friend. We're all friends here at Maui Craft Kitchen. My name is Don, and if you're new to this channel, please be sure to take a second now and hit that subscribe button. It really helps me further this channel and keep these videos rolling for you guys. I appreciate it so much. Many mahalas. If you missed last week's episode, I'll leave a link for it now. Be sure to watch that one. Not only did we learn how to make a sourdough starter, we also learned a huge trick on how to save money maintaining that sourdough starter. This week, part two of that series, The Build. You've been feeding your sourdough starter, you think it's ready to use, or you know it's ready to use, and you wanna get it there, this is how it's done. But before we get right into it, you know we gotta learn something, so let's hop on board our school bus, head on over to that MCK 101 classroom, and learn something. Whew, that was a long trip. That bus driver was crazy. Welcome to the low budget MCK 101 classroom, where today we're going to learn a little bit about flour combinations that you can feed your sourdough starter, how much and when to feed your sourdough starter based upon your needs, and the float test. So let class begin flour combinations. Now you don't have to use any combination of flours at all. You can use 100% bread flour, that's fine, but at least use bread flour. All purpose flour has a little bit of a lower protein content, so it may not be as good, who knows. I'm sure it'll still make a starter, but I do recommend 100% bread flour at least. The ratio that I like to use is 70% bread flour, 20% whole wheat flour, 10% rye flour. Not only do I think that this lends great flavor in whatever it is that I'm making, it also helps to just give the starter a little bit of variety in its food source. How much and when to feed your sourdough starter to get it ready to use? There are a lot of variables in this question, but let me tell you what I do and you can fine tune it based upon your needs. I like to use a 10% starter to flour ratio. This means that for every 10 grams of starter that I'm feeding, I feed it 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. I also like to overshoot my recipes by about 10 to 30 grams, just to make sure that I have enough starter. So let's say that my recipe calls for 190 grams of starter. Eight hours before I need it, I'm going to feed 10 grams of starter, 100 grams of flour, and 100 grams of water, making sure that I have enough starter. This gives me 210 grams. Now you can fine tune this by increasing or decreasing that ratio based upon your needs. Over the course of the next eight hours, my starter will begin to feed and grow until it's ready to use. Now, it is going to take about one to six months until your starter gains enough strength to be ready to use, but you can do what's called the float test to find out. Simply give your starter a big feed like we just learned about, and when it's at least doubled in size, get yourself a glass of water, gently skim some starter off the top, and roll that very carefully onto the surface of the water. If it sinks down, your starter isn't ready. Keep feeding it, it'll get there. But if it floats, your starter's producing yeast and should be ready to go. Now that we got some of the nitty gritties out of the way, let's work some of that Maui magic and get right down to it. And here we are, thanks to Rod the camera guy. Now, all we're really doing is feeding our starter more than we normally do. Now, remember that these ratios are tailored to me, so you may have to adjust accordingly to suit your needs. But all I'm going to do is thoroughly mix 10 grams of starter, 100 grams of flour, and 100 grams of water together in my container. Now that you've thoroughly mixed your starter, you're going to let it set until it's at least doubled in volume and can pass the float test. A good way to find out if it's doubled in volume is to mark it now with a rubber band at the approximate level so that you can clearly see when it's doubled. Now sit back and watch it grow. Now 
and that is it, my friends. Your sourdough starter is ready to use. I know there was a lot of information and a lot of variables in this video, but there's a lot of variables in sourdough. Just remember the main thing, keep cooking and keep having fun. Be sure to follow Mountain Craft Kitchen on Facebook and Instagram to find out what's cooking next. I can't thank you all enough for your support. Many mahalos and much aloha.